Hello guys, and you know I love trolling Russian politicians and Russian diplomats on this channel. But today, the president of the European Council, Charles Michel, did it better than I can think of. On his Twitter, he published the congratulations to the so-called President Putin on the victory in his presidential elections. What is funny, these elections have only started and will last until the 17th of March, but we all know Putin is going to win. And as Charles Michel stated, no competition, no freedom, no opposition. That's the way Russia lives for the last decades. But most importantly, they have some serious troubles in the bordering with Ukraine regions in Kursk and Belgorod. And actually, many people were evacuated during the election days. Who could have imagined such situation is possible when back in February 2022, Putin planned his Blitzkrieg? Let me tell you more about this pathetic process of Russian elections and the evacuations of people from Kursk and Belgorod. My name is Anna. And I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda, fake news and dictator Putin. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. Today I'm in Kyiv, heart of brave Ukraine, for the documentary project on Russian lies that we were working so hard on and it will actually be on TV this Sunday and now we are actively working on the English version of the documentary and I will share with you that later. But let's talk about these elections that have started today in Russia. Of course there are lots of reports of violations but these violations are minor. I mean the ones they can report uh, like portraits of Putin that are everywhere and um, at the same time we understand there are no international observers there are no democratic procedures and honestly I don't know if there are any other candidates of course they exist on the list because it's needed but all the real opposition disappeared Navalny was killed Nadezhden who was also a fake opposition leader we have a video about him by the way on the channel he was not allowed to participate and in general everybody knows Putin is going to win Actually, I was watching the number of his interviews before uh, the start of elections and there is no way he discusses any potential change, you know, like any normal presidential candidate when speaking about future elections has this idea that something may change, he may not be chosen, Putin does not have these doubts and long ago he turned himself into Tsar because Russia loves strong hand, even if this strong hand is all covered in blood. So let me know in the comments below, do you think any protests are possible during these elections? And by protest, I don't mean two or three people standing in a 140 million country. I mean like real protests that can change something. Because beautiful people say spring is the time of change and spring is the time of uh, revolutions. Maybe, but I am like 100% confident nothing will change in Russia until we change it. Remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and to see the future dissolution of Russia on this channel. I promise I will comment it my best and with some wine around. What is also very important, it's really difficult to hold elections during wartime. That's one of the reasons that does not allow Ukraine to have this uh, elections because one third of the country is torn by war. There are constant air raid alerts everywhere. And of course, Russia will definitely target. Voting points will target if we do it electronically. But it is also problematic to have elections, even fake elections during wartime in Russia. And this is a very important and a beautiful reminder that war has already returned back home to Russia where it belongs. And in regions like Belgorod, in regions like Kursk, we can actually 
see people reporting, how many air raid alerts they have, how many times they need to hide in bomb shelters and they're not enough. We also witnessed that Russian air defense systems, they do not work well, there are not enough of them, only some close to the front lines covering Russian army and of course around Moscow, St. Petersburg and around hundreds of Putin's bunkers because he is a coward and they don't have enough to protect their people and of course they did not plan this blitzkrieg will uh, return back to Russia, you know. And now after uh, Russian uh, legions, Russian volunteers, a legion of freedom uh, crossed the border and returned back to Russia because they are Russian citizens fighting and demonstrating a different opinion on uh, modern Russian policy. Um, they have warned uh, people who live in these regions uh, that they have to be careful because there are lots of Russian military objects on the territory. They use Kursk and Belhorod villages and towns to target Kharkiv. So uh, we have to clean this territory from Russian uh, machines that are used to kill people and that's what Russian volunteers are working on. And as a result, these regions are becoming dangerous and people are being evacuated from there. According to the videos and reports, both Freedom of Russia, Russian Volunteer Corps and a Siberian Battalion on their Telegram channels, but also from official Russian media and Russian so-called Russian governors, uh, slaves of Putin, uh, we know that 8,000 civilian cars left the region. So these are huge queues, something that uh, reminds uh, Kyiv and many Ukrainian cities at the start of uh, Russian war in Ukraine. So there are literally thousands of Russian civilian cars leaving the territories that are getting hot. And what is also important, they are getting hot because Russian citizens who fight for Ukraine and liberation of Russia from Putin are working there. And I think it's really beautiful and it's important that it takes place during the so-called Putin's elections. I loved in the comments on one of news channels that I follow in Ukraine, people were saying that Actually, Putin will see the end of modern Russian Federation because he started it. And maybe this is actually last elections where he is the only candidate. He is actually a coward as all bullies. He is very much afraid of uh, things that happen to other dictators. I know that uh, the death of Gaddafi was something that people say inspired him to become more aggressive and to look for enemies everywhere in the world. But we all know that dictatorship always brings a person to an end. Unfortunately, it may also bring the whole country to an end, but there is an option. Dissolution of Russia may not be that bad and give birth to many new, beautiful and more independent republics. Let me know what do you think about this process of elections in Russia without elections. Maybe you have some interesting fun jokes about this pathetic process. Do share with them with the community. Thank you for buying me coffees, much needed when you have a lot of work. I'm trying to play with colors to make me look less asleep. Uh, thank you for becoming my patrons and helping this channel and the very project uh, fighting against Russian propaganda grow bigger. Uh, remember to join me on Instagram, Threads and X and also we have a beautiful Discord community. And of course, check our merch shop with lots of good items about Ukraine, our cultural heritage and our weapons and resilient stories. All the links that you need are below in the description of this video. And most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. United we stand and united we win. Together we will witness the collapse of Putin's regime and the collapse of chauvinist Russian Federation. Slava Ukraini!